Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial from Biology with Shalini and in this video I am going to talk about a fatty acid biosynthesis part 2 which is going to be the main part of synthesis. So in my previous video I have talked all about uh, the shuttle system of acetyl coenzyme A or transport of acetyl coenzyme A from the mitochondrial matrix into the cytosol. Uh, so let's do a quick revision of all that. So fatty acids are long chains of hydrocarbons and they also have a terminal carboxylic acid group right terminal carboxylic acid group and most of the fatty acids found in nature they have even number of carbon atoms okay and the precursor of fatty acid synthesis is acetyl coenzyme A which is formed from pyruvate and pyruvate is the end product of glycolysis. So this acetyl coenzyme A is getting formed in mitochondria and the movement of acetyl coenzyme A from mitochondria to cytosol is a little bit complicated process so you can have an idea uh, by watching my previous video if you haven't. So I would suggest you to have a look at that video. So now coming to today's topic, it is fatty acid biosynthesis part 2. So acetyl coenzyme A plus NADPH they will form fatty acid, right? So may, there are several steps included in the formation of fatty acids. First is carboxylation, then formation of acetyl ACP and melonyl ACP, then elongation they have four stages for each round for the very first round they include condensation reduction dehydration and reduction okay so you can have an idea by looking at this small chart right isko elaborate karke i'll show it to you like this right so this is the carboxylation step this is the first step and this is then formation of acetyl and melonyl ACP right so acetyl coenzyme A this is the first committed step in fatty acid biosynthesis and this is irreversible step okay these are reversible steps so as the name suggests carboxylation so in this first committed step what happens acetyl coenzyme A will react with carbon dioxide here in this step carbon dioxide is used in the form of bicarbonate okay so acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase will help in the conversion of acetyl coenzyme A into melonyl coenzyme. This acetyl coenzyme A carboxyl has biotin as a prosthetic group which is a common feature of all carbon dioxide binding enzymes. Prosthetic group is the covalently bound to the protein and this is required for the catalytic activity of it okay so this is acetyl coenzyme a carboxylase is converting acetyl coenzyme a into melonyl coenzyme a right and here atp is used after that acetyl coenzyme a and melonyl coenzyme a these are acted upon by acetyl transacylase and melonyl transacylase now this enzyme transacylase helps in the transfer of acyl group from one to the another ठीक है ये acyl carrier protein है okay so it will be attached to the acetyl group similarly in this case also this ACP is attached to the melonyl group with the help of this acetyl transacylase and melonyl transacylase respectively ठीक है तो ये coenzyme A this part will get removed and यहाँ पे ACP will get attached now this acetyl ACP and melonyl ACP here acyl melonyl ACP condensing an enzyme will work now this is the part of elongation okay so here pe ACP and carbon dioxide will get removed acetyl ACP ka ACP this ACP and this carbon dioxide will be removed from acetyl ACP and melonyl ACP and it will lead to the formation of acetoacetyl ACP okay so after this this is the first step in elongation which is condensation 
So next is reduction. In reduction, acetoacetyl ACP will use NADPH as reductant and enzyme used is beta ketoacyl ACP reductase. Okay. So this enzyme will help in the reduction step. And acetoacetyl ACP is getting converted into D3 hydroxybutyl ACP. Okay, its configuration is right side pe hai, that's why we'll call it D. Okay, so after that dehydration step is there in which this D3 hydroxybutyl ACP is getting converted into crotonyl ACP, and here water is removed. Dehydration. You can remember what's happening in every step through this name. Condensation means two molecules are condensing. Reduction means, you know, reduction is going on. Dehydration, removal of water. So, enzyme used is 3-hydroxyacyl ACP dehydrotase and water is getting removed in this step. So, this and this, it is getting removed. So this hydrogen and this hydrogen will get removed and will get a product like this. This is crotonyl ACP. So after dehydration, the fourth step is reduction again. So crotonyl ACP will get reduced with the help of NADPH and the enzyme catalyzed is enoyl ACP reductase and the product formed is butyl ACP. right this is the product which is getting formed in the end so the first round of elongation produces this four carbon for one two three four okay four carbon butyl acp and the cycle this cycle will now repeat itself with four to five times and now the next time with melonyl acp so after the this cycle happens for good two to six times the process will continue till the formation of palmitoyl acp right and further after the formation of palmitoyl acp this is not this molecule is not accepted by the enzyme uh, which is this one acyl melonyl acp condensing enzyme this palmitoyl acp cannot be elongated further through this enzyme so iske aage no um, fatty acid um, syn, uh, elongation will be continue so will be continued so thioesterase enzyme will now work upon here and it will split it into palmitate and acp right so this is our first fatty acid which is formed in fatty acid biosynthesis now in in case of eukaryotes the elongation of fatty acids beyond palmitate which is 16 carbon compound right that will be carried out by enzymes located on the cytosolic surface of smooth endoplasmic reticulum okay these enzymes will help in the elongation of the um, uh, when uh, more than um, 16 carbon uh, fatty acids uh, synthesis, uh, synthesis is required so whenever our body requires um, uh, fatty acids with more than carbon number 16 they are synthesized with the help of melonyl coenzyme a okay and the enzymes located on the cytosolic surface of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum melonyl coenzyme a will be used instead of melonyl acp right also in case of prokaryotes uh, separate enzyme uh, catalyze the separate reaction for each uh, of the reaction of fatty acid biosynthesis there is separate enzyme in case of prokaryotes whereas in case of eukaryotes we have fatty acid synthase so it is much efficient than prokaryotes so this is the difference between the fatty acid synthesis of prokaryotes and eukaryotes and in my next video i'll talk about formation of double bonds and about the regulation of fatty acid biosynthesis